Okay, this video is, is schizophrenia a dietary disease? And some of the things I'll talk about here, I actually can maybe have a link to the medication lecture I did previously on it. Okay, so here's soteria. Soteria means uh, deliverance, deliverance from madness. Okay, schizophrenia can be a very bad disease. Uh, this guy right here is the author of the book, Lauren Mosher. He was the head of the NIMH of psychiatry, like the head psychiatrist in the whole United States. Big shot. And he had noticed that schizophrenic patients seem to do better when they are just left out, living in the real world, rather than institutionalized and heavily medicated with antipsychotic medications like Haldol. Okay? So here were these residential houses. They did the first one in San Francisco area. They did some other ones later in other locations. And what he found, here he is, Lauren Moser, uh, when they reported the results out, it was something like about 15%. About 15% of, um, of the patients got better, treated the standard way with medications. He had about 85% of the patients get better, be able to return to living in the outside world, you know, having a job, living on their own, or being married, having kids and stuff. So they did incredibly well. A lot of schizophrenics are potentially highly functioning, okay? So that, oh, also then here's the funny part. So what happened to him? What happened to Mosier when um, he did this magnificent thing? Did they give him a Nobel Prize? No, he got fired. He got fired. They go, you are biased against drugs, fired. Tried to ruin his career. So that's what happens when you do something good in medicine. So it's important to be aware of that. You know, when you hear somebody's a big shot in medicine, whenever I hear somebody's a big shot in medicine, oh, so-and-so, you know, is a big head of this department or something. It depends on the department and the field. But in general, if it's a medicine-related field, I think, you know, they help sell a lot of drugs, okay? Because that's what gets you promoted in internal medicine. All right, now here's a guy who I'll show you. This is John Boyd. And John Boyd, he was a USA fighter pilot in the 1950s. And he, was, he became famous as this great genius. And I read like two or three biographies of him. I thought he was a pretty cool guy. And he was constantly reading. And he had a couple of friends who he would call him up in the middle of the night. He'd, call him, he'd get an idea, he'd call him at 2 o'clock in the morning. They thought he was very annoying. I, by the way, I was very interested in geniuses. I, studied, I read tons and tons of stuff about all these biographies of geniuses, research studies of geniuses, because I wanted to become one. Okay, so anyways... Um, Constant, constant reading and analysis and then discussions with his friends was the way he refined his ideas. Okay, but he ended up with the conclusion that if you want to be an innovator in most things, what it means is you're going to get in trouble because there's always an establishment. And the establishment, they get their prestige, they make their money based on keeping things the way they are in their hierarchy. So, for example, when they were trying to design planes, uh, the way to make money would be go along with whoever's got the money, whatever they want. Versus Boyd would inspect things or check things, and he would he would see problems, and he would piss people off. Um, so all I can tell you is Boyd made a very good point. And you come to a crossroads in your life, and, and you're basically ha you're asked this question. Do you want to sell out and kiss ass and get promoted and have a big fancy title? Or do you want to try to do truly good work and innovate? And it's a difficult choice. Like I said, you know, look in the nutritional world. Andrew Umerin, sellout, talks nonsense, millions of dollars, five women in his bed, okay? Me, tells the truth. I'm a chump. I don't make any money with this stuff. My wife's divorcing me. I don't have any woman in my bed right now, okay? And it's been a while. So <laughs> I still feel committed to doing the right thing, but I'm just telling you, you pay a high price when you go for doing the right thing and innovating rather than, you know, being a phony sellout. All right, now here's Dr. McDougall, another guy who paid the price to do the right thing, and he's getting interviewed here. You can watch this video. I'll put the link to it in the description below. Schizophrenia reversal. And he's talking about how his study of schizophrenia indicates that it is a dietary disease. He says it matches the global distribution of disease whereby it's much more common in Western countries. And there are papers suggesting an association between this and people who are gluten sensitive as well as um, a milk allergy. It's described as a milk allergy. So a lot of people ask me about schizophrenia. What I'm basically doing is I'm giving you here the, the tools to, to research it further. Okay, so schizophrenia, here's the pre prevalence of it, the global distribution of the disease. The big orange is where it's more common. So it's most common, like in the United States, there's a Western diet for you. Australia, there's a Western diet for you. And some of these European countries are eating a Western diet. 
Okay, here's one of the papers on brain-gut axis dysfunction and hypersensitivity to food antigens and schizophrenia. Basically, gluten and cow's milk uh, areas were associated with schizophrenia. So importance of the development, leaky guts, so leaky guts associated with increased risk like autoimmune diseases are. Dr. McDougall thinks it's an autoimmune disease. And then there's also hypersensitivity to some particular foods. Gluten, when you're sensitive to gluten, can be related to uh, injuring the intestinal tract, having more uh, leaky gut, gut permeability. Casein of cow's milk. And look at that, casein of cow's milk, that's the same protein that T. Colin Campbell wrote about in the China studies being the strongest uh, carcinogen that he was aware of. And if you read the literature on multiple sclerosis, autoimmune disease in the brain, demyelinating periventricular lesions, guess what? Cow's milk comes up again as the main thing. There was a buterophilin antigen that was thought associated with demyelination. Okay, then if you read about cow's milk and autoimmune disease, that's associated with type 1 diabetes. Okay. So anyways, this is pretty interesting. So what does this all mean? This means that if somebody has schizophrenic, they should be looking into all this stuff. Don't drink any cow's milk. Avoid gluten, okay? It's not that hard. You don't have to eat wheat, rye, and barley, okay? Uh, you don't need cow's milk. You can eat other things. You can eat potatoes, sweet potatoes, rice, beans, etc. Okay, here's another paper about all the nutritional and nutrition deficiencies of schizophrenia. Okay, then here's a lady here. This is Deanna Kelly. She's a farm D, and she's giving a big lecture here on... Um, the relationship between gluten sensitivity and schizophrenia. So I will put some links in the description below, but hopefully this will help people when they've got a friend or a family member or themselves with schizophrenia to be aware of some of their options to uh, hopefully improve their health and maybe get big results. I think schizophrenia is a little bit like Parkinson's. It's not all the same cause. There's subsets of different types of schizophrenia, and some of them got a good chance to respond to this stuff. So hopefully it'll help.